today we are starting a fresh topic uh, kinematics of uh, flow and uh, studying kinematics we need to go into the flow types so today we will talk about the flow types uh, uh, that are used to uh, uh, analyze critical situations uh, so first uh, in the content today we will go to the um, some of the classics literature that is available for flow of flow visualization and uh, uh, either in the form of the book or in the form of the videos so i will uh, give you the links to uh, then we will go into this uh, streamline concept and streamline definition is mathematical representation and then we will go into this path line concept uh, and how to generate path lines uh, then we will go into the concept of street lines and then we will go into the timeline and in the end uh, we will go through one of the software that can be used for this uh, 2D flow visualization. Uh, okay, let's start uh, with uh, this picture of uh, uh, in the year 1500 Leonardo da Vinci has sketched uh, 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 there is an obstacle and there is a flame flow over the behind the obstacle. So you can see the turbulence uh, behind the obstacle that has been taking place and that is uh, uh, depicted in this illustration. So uh, even in this picture you see there is an uh, uh, expansion of a pipe and uh, the fluid uh, is flowing and we can see there are vertices formed. Uh, so uh, this has been done by um, Leonardo da Vinci and this picture is talking about uh, illustrating the, the fluid coming out of a tube and how the turbulence in the, takes place when it drops from some certain height and uh, this has been shown in this sketch. So uh, people are trying to uh, understand the behavior of the fluid flow uh, from the early history. And uh, okay, there is uh, one book that is available under the title "An Album of Fluid Motion" from Milton van Dijk. And uh, this book, considering uh, visualization of uh, the laminar flow, the vertices, the turbulence. Uh, the short waves and so this is the content of this uh, and this is one of the picture taken from this book uh, from of fluid motion there is a jet and the water coming out is a jet so there is a high speed flow and these are the you know, so called vortex streets that has formed uh, and uh, uh, like, uh, so many pictures are available in this content uh, uh, there is one more book recently, uh, uh, relatively uh, recently published in 2003 uh, under the title of A Gallery of Fluid Motion from Cambridge University Press. And this uh, also shows uh, the fluid flow motion, for example, uh, the fluid coming out uh, and at a Reynolds number, relatively low Reynolds number, and you can see the, how the uh, vertices are formed. So what happens when we increase the Reynolds number and uh, we see here uh, the flow becomes turbulent at uh, some high Reynolds numbers. So uh, there are a lot of pictures available in this uh, book uh, which shows the behavior uh, under different conditions of the fluid flow. Uh, I mean there is uh, one resource which is a very useful resource uh, that is actually the uh, videos uh, uh, available uh, uh, on our MIT website uh, uh, and this is something uh, uh, the work that has been done by uh, uh, Shapiro and he actually uh, founded a committee called National Committee for Fluid Mechanics Plans and uh, uh, that is, uh, these planes are available having uh, videos and their notes are available and even these uh, notes are uh, available in the uh, form of the book as well. So go, going through these videos it is very important because uh, it helps you to understand uh, 
uh, there's so many concepts related to uh, fit mechanics, uh, starting from cavitation, boundary layer. I've just mentioned very few here. I mean, there's a long list available. So I advise all of you, uh, it is uh, somehow mandatory to all of you to go through uh, these videos. I mean, they are uh, very useful, even though they are a bit old, 1961, I mean, as uh, uh, they are black and white videos, but uh, they are all classics. So um, I recommend all of you to go through uh, go through these videos. Uh, okay, uh, as we know, the motion of the fluid is complex. Uh, complex in the sense that uh, how it behaves, uh, we uh, do not know, and uh, on a lot of factors it depends upon. So let's say this picture showing the fluid flow taking place over a cylinder and you see uh, uh, behind the cylinder vertices are formed and the, the top surface the, uh, the flow is smooth and we can see the stagnation point at some place. Uh, nowadays, uh, people use uh, computer simulations to simulate fluid flow and there are a lot of uh, commercial packages available and uh, uh, in the end of this course, we will talk about uh, one of the CFG software and CCFX, a uh, little bit of it so that we can uh, plot those velocity vectors and streamlines and all that. Uh, there is a bubble and if the Reynolds number is small, how uh, uh, the bubble shape is uh, and if Reynolds number is very high, for example, in case of an atomic explosion or some uh, uh, TNT explosions and so the fluid flow is wild and highly turbulent and it's uh, damn complicated how uh, it behaves. So, uh, in order to visualize the fluid flow, there are four types of uh, lines that is actually uh, people draw, uh, whether they draw it analytically or whether they draw it experimentally. So, the first one is a streamline, second is path line, third is a street line, fourth is a timeline. So, our today's lecture is actually uh, we will go through uh, these uh, types of streamlines in today's lecture, uh, one by one. Okay, let's start with the uh, streamline. So, um, uh, I know that you, most of you would be familiar with this word streamline and from your fluid mechanics 1 course as well. So, you know uh, when fluid is flowing, there is certain velocity and there is certain velocity vector. So, what is a streamline? It's not a real line, but it's a hypothetical line uh, where uh, everywhere tangent to the local velocity vector at a given instant. So, if you take a snapshot and a particular instant, uh, uh, different particle of the fluid having uh, different velocity uh, in the space. So, at this position, the velocity vector is tangent to this point. So the, uh, and the, here the velocity vector is tangent. So if you draw all, if you draw a line uh, joining all those tangents at that instant of time, so you end up with the line uh, called the streamline. Uh, just look at the uh, behavior of the fluid flow. If you have a tank, water is stored in it, and at the bottom you have an orifice, so you allow water to come out. And uh, so what do you notice here about uh, these velocity vectors at A, B and C? So the first thing is uh, once it is in a streamline then it means at each and every point in the space uh, uh, the velocity vector would be tangent. So the first thing we observe, uh, uh, the, uh, we observe the flow pattern for this water coming out through a tank uh, from at the bottom. So all the velocity vectors at point A, B, C are tangent to the streamline. So if you are here, you draw a tangent. So this is one point. If you are here, you draw a tangent. So velocity vector would always be tangential. Uh, second thing we observe in this uh, uh, flow uh, pattern that all these streamlines uh, are actually following certain path. So, uh, uh, there will be streamlines uh, adjacent to the wall and uh, you know, uh, uh, 
the streamline at the center wall following the path of the wall because uh, as we know streamlines one of the feature of the streamline is they are uh, parallel to each other so once the fluid moves down so all the particles are moving downwards and uh, and once uh, it sees the contour of the wall so it follows the path of the wall and uh, at this uh, section all these streamlines which are having a spacing once they reach to this uh, exit point the spacing has been reduced so they are following certain path uh, and uh, that is being dictated by the wall so what is uh, the available space for them to flow so that is determined uh, that is something taken into an account by the fluid flow and streamlines are following that contour uh, uh, there is another example of uh, 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 streamlines over an aerofoil so this is supposed to be a cross-sectional view of an airplane wing we call it an airfoil so if you see in the third dimension so this would be the wing of an aircraft and so we are just seeing the one of the cross sections so we are just observing the 2d flow so what we see here is uh, uh, the streamlines are moving uh, uh, much faster from the top surface and a little bit slower from the uh, bottom surface. So once the, the, the velocity is lower, so pressure is high. When velocity is high, the pressure is low. So the difference of pressure is actually providing a lift to this airplane. And we will talk later uh, when we will go into the aerofoil in detail. But uh, what you see is the streamlines uh, following a certain pattern. And uh, uh, if we look at closely, so uh, there is a streamline above the surface, there are two streamlines below the surface and there is a dividing streamline which separates the flow and at that uh, point uh, we see here, uh, there is this dividing streamline would be uh, intersecting the body and the velocity will be zero uh, uh, respect to the body, if this body is stationary and the fluid is flowing or uh, the fluid is stationary and the body is moving, whatever the case is. So uh, that point would be called as a stagnation point. So this this special streamline, which is not actually moving, which is being stopped by this body, uh, is actually separating two distinct types of flows: the flow above the surface and the flow below the surface. And the behavior of the fluid above the surface is different from the behavior below the surface. So, uh, and you can think of uh, if uh, a small ball is placed into a water flow and uh, we have a steady flow case, it means the uh, fluid properties are not, more ch in, uh, not changing with the time. Then uh, if this small ball is placed in the water and uh, there is a surging trajectory of the ball. So if uh, you follow that trajectory, you will be end up with a line called uh, streamline so for a steady flow situation uh, uh, this path is uh, no more changing every time whatever fluid comes in it passes through and it moves and it moves in this manner so uh, we will be able to follow the path of the if you just put a small ball here water is pushing this ball and is a certain trajectory the ball is going to follow so whatever the trajectory of the ball would be that would actually form a line hypothetical line uh, this the line we call it an streamline uh, so uh, there are certain properties associated with streamline streamlines are everywhere parallel to the direction of flow one of the feature and uh, at a given instant uh, we see that no streamlines are crossing each other so there is no cross flow across the streamlines uh, it is actually the consequence of the first uh, uh, point that once the flow is parallel so it means no streamline would cross each other so there is no flow uh, across the streamline takes place uh, as we know, streamlines are instantaneous lines, so every uh, instant of time, uh, if you take a snapshot, you will end up with a different uh, pattern, different trajectory. Uh, 
So uh, we call it every instant uh, these lines are going to change. So if it is a steady state problem, then um, it doesn't change with the time. But in unsteady case, it always changes with the time. Uh, one good thing about the streamline idea is it is something we can deal mathematically much more easily. So uh, let's consider a 2D flow case. 2D flow case means uh, the velocity components are in U and V only. U is the velocity component in X, V is the velocity component in uh, Y. So if you see a displacement vector, so as we know, uh, the velocity vector is uh, parallel to the displacement vector or they are, uh, the velocity vector is always tangent. So we can say that uh, this velocity vector is parallel to the displacement vector. Once it is in parallel, so for parallel lines, the gradient for the displacement vector would be the same as the gradient for this velocity vector. So we can see the gradient for the displacement vector would be d, uh, rise over run dy over dx and the gradient for the velocity vector would be the v component of the velocity and the u component of the velocity. So uh, this equation actually uh, formulates a definition of uh, streamline. So if uh, by some means you know v and u component, so you can work out the mathematical equation for the streamline. So uh, for example, we can write the same thing like this as well, dx to be brought uh, above and v to be brought down into the denominator. So you end up with dx over u should be the same as dy over v. So that is something in an equation that is true for 2D flow. The same can be extrapolated for 3D if uh, w is the component in the z direction. So dz would be the displacement vector in the z direction. So if uh, they are parallel, then this ratio must hold. So uh, this allows us actually this mathematical definition help us to uh, deal them mathematically and in the later lectures we will see how we can work out the mathematical expressions for streamlines. Uh, the next thing is uh, path line. Uh, path line is actually the actual path taken by a, a particular fluid particle uh, as it flows uh, from one point to another. So when time is zero, the particle is here. And after some time, uh, the particle is here. After some time, the particle is here. So what we are doing is we are following the actual path, what the single fluid particle is uh, uh, taking up. So uh, uh, actually this is uh, uh, the observer. You can think of observer you are sitting. Observer is sitting over the fluid particle. So as the fluid is moving, the observer is also following the path. So uh, then this this line generated by uh, uh, connecting all these uh, points at uh, different instances, uh, uh, we will be able to draw a path line. So uh, for if you just put a small ball here. Uh, if uh, into this water flow. So as we know uh, by the passage of time the, uh, the direction of the flow is changing at every instant and uh, the ball is going to follow the uh, path of the fluid particle. So the trajectory drawn would be called as uh, the path line. So uh, idea for uh, path line is, is actually the actual path which the every fluid particle is uh, uh, taking up. Uh, take another example, let's say there is a water coming out from a garden hose uh, and what you are doing is uh, the pipe you are oscillating, you are oscillating sideways. So what do you observe here if you are oscillating sideways uh, your hose? So you see a continuous sheet of water and each individual particle is going to follow a certain path. For example, in this case, uh, we are ignoring the effect of gravity. So uh, there would be a straight line path by each fluid particle. Uh, so how we can uh, um, um, see the path line? So uh, what we can see is uh, if we have uh, uh, 
a particular fluid particle and we have just uh, dyed it so uh, as the fluid is moving so at every instant of time uh, that blue color particle would be uh, following certain trajectory after each interval so uh, that for that actually uh, form uh, formulate a path line similarly if there is some other particle of different color so what path or trajectory it takes uh, uh, yeah, in, in uh, different time intervals uh, uh, we will be able to draw a path line. So the idea of path line is uh, a Lagrangian approach because um, uh, you are actually sitting over a fluid particle observer is sitting over a fluid particle and you are watching its path where the particle is going. So uh, as you know that uh, uh, covering a die or something like that uh, can help us to visualize the path line. So uh, through fluid flow visualization is easier uh, and as we know it is uh, the, the path is uh, uh, changing as uh, the time progresses so the idea of path line is useful for unsteady flow cases so what we are doing is actually uh, we are injecting one particle and uh, uh, then we see how the, uh, it moves in the fluid flow. So, uh, how can we generate is if we take uh, multiple snapshots. So, when time is 0, the particle is here. When time is t1, the particle is here. When time is t2, the particle is here. So on, so on. So, once you take multiple snapshots and you join those uh, 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 points together to form the path line. Uh, the next idea is uh, the streak lines. Uh, so, streak line is actually the locus of the particles which have uh, earlier passed through a prescribed point. So, it is actually the, uh, 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 the path of the particle which actually has passed earlier. I mean, it is actually we are uh, uh, talking about the history of the fluid particle where actually uh, from, uh, it has passed through. So how we can do it uh, uh, in case of path line we just have uh, drop a die uh, but here we have to do it uh, continuously injecting die uh, at a, a particular point. So at a given position and uh, in this way we see uh, by the different instances of time uh, the particle would be as passed through that particular uh, point in the space and uh, that locus would be representing the street line and uh, uh, so the street line is basically the line joining the instantaneous position of a succession of particles uh, which actually have come from a particular point particular station so when time is zero uh, all particles would be at a certain position so uh, uh, different particles at different instant of time follow a different path so this would be the path line but uh, uh, as we know if you take the history at some point of time the blue particle has passed to this point similarly the at some point of time the uh, uh, green particle has passed through that point and similarly uh, the red particle has passed through this point so if you draw if you draw a line joining all these points uh, you will be able to draw the straight line uh, so from a ball example if multiple small balls are placed into the water flowing at the same position but at different time steps. The street line is the path by connecting all the balls in the placement order. So uh, the idea of the uh, street line is uh, just uh, exam another example would be a uh, flow coming out of a smoke uh, uh, chimney, smoke of a chimney. So uh, all the particles has been issued from a particular point. But uh, once they go into the flow, different particles would be moving with different speed. So, uh, uh, if uh, you uh, uh, see in, in the history or in, if you follow the history where the particular uh, 
uh, at a particular position the particle has actually passed in the history if you uh, spot them and draw the line then that line would be called as streak line uh, so it means in order to visualize the streak lines what you need is two multiple particles are injected into the flow from this point so you're not just talking about a fluid in path line we are only talking about a particular uh, fluid particle and our observer is all the sitting over the uh, fluid particle but here what we are doing is we are injecting uh, continuously injecting dye uh, and uh, multiple par uh, par uh, particles were injected at the same given position so uh, at this particular position uh, the, what the particle has actually passed through so that actually represents the multiple particles at one uh, instant of time one snapshot so if you take a particular one snapshot so uh, different particles uh, are issued and uh, from the same position and but at uh, uh, a given instant uh, some would be somewhere some would be here some would be here once you join them you will be able to join a uh, uh, line or uh, street line so for a steady flow case uh, the stream lines uh, the path lines and the street lines are coinciding each other so there is no difference when the flow is steady so uh, uh, the path lines the street lines and the stream lines uh, would be actually uh, uh, coinciding each other uh, the difference only comes when the flow becomes unsteady Unsteady it means the properties are changing with the passage of time. If the properties are not uh, changing with the passage of time, then all these lines uh, would be coinciding each other. So uh, the idea of uh, street line, uh, path line, and uh, stream line, uh, uh, their uh, their uh, trajectories would be different when the flow is unsteady. So in case of a steady flow, they will be overlapping uh, each other. Uh, okay, the last one is called timeline. So, what is timeline is actually the set of the fluid particles uh, that form a line at a given instant. So, for example, when time is zero, all particles are standing, let's say. They are just about to move. As the flow is moving, so at that instant, uh, the, the particle one is here, particle two is here, all the particles are in a straight line. So, uh, when you join these uh, uh, points, you will be able to draw a line called a timeline. But when time is uh, zero, so as the time progresses, uh, some particles in the middle would be moving faster and the particles which are closer to the wall are moving slower. So, we can see that at uh, time t1, the uh, particles, uh, the position of the particles would be different. So, if you uh, join together the position of the particles at that instant, you will be able to draw a line, we call it a timeline. Similarly, after some more time, t2, uh, you have uh, different position. At time 3, you have different positions. So, timeline is actually the uh, line at a given instant and you uh, just join uh, the position of the fluid particles. So, these lines are obviously at uh, every instant of uh, time, the, uh, the position of the fluid particles will be different and when you join the position of these points, you end up with a line called timeline. So, for every instant, timeline would be different. Uh, as we know, because what we need is nowadays in modern days, let's say fluid is flowing and we take it uh, a snapshot uh, from the camera and at every instant uh, we will be able to see the position of the fluid particle. If uh, obviously the, uh, uh, it all depends on the speed of the fluid flow. So uh, we can, I mean, just like thinking of uh, uh, in a uh, uh, 100 meter race, uh, as you know, uh, the time to complete most uh, 9.5 seconds is the time which this runner is taking. So, we can think of these, all these athletes are fluid particles. So, some are at this position, some are at this position. So, at a given instant of time, if you take a snapshot and you join these uh, points together, you will be able to form a 
time line so 9.6 seconds the position would be different 9.4 seconds the position would be different so this is the concept of the uh, timeline so timelines uh, for every instant there would be a, a different position of the field particles so there would be a different timeline uh, all this idea can be uh, uh, visualized uh, i mean uh, uh, there is a, a flat visualization software and uh, today I will show you that software you will be able to draw the streamlines, street lines and path lines and uh, timelines. No? So uh, in order to do this, uh, I need to go to the software. So this is uh, the user interface of the software. So, uh, I have uh, so far cleared the screen. So, uh, uh, what you can see here is different streamline. Let's say if I ask uh, to show streamline. So, I just click on uh, uh, this uh, streamline and there are several options here. Okay. Uh, let's uh, wait a bit. What is wrong with the software? Um, uh, let's go back a bit. Uh, let's see this. Um, uh, uh, there are different points. So, first of all, uh, let's say I show you some of the streamlines. So, for example, at the center. So, you see the red color representing the streamlines at the center point. And there is a one point called a saddle point. Saddle point is uh, is neither a minima nor a maxima. So you can see here uh, uh, the streamline. Let's say if I go to this single uh, field lines and I just uh, follow this uh, and uh, I start an animation. So you can see the red lines are actually the streamlines. So, so it follows certain path and uh, the velocity vector is always tangent to the path. So for this particular center direction, for the saddle point, uh, the velocity vector is, uh, uh, the streamlines are following certain path and everywhere I can see this uh, streamline. So let's say if I go to the path line, so just I want to see the path line, I just click here. So the yellow marker is actually showing the actual path of the fluid particle. For example, if it is here, if it is in the circle, so if it is close to the saddle point, so it is the yellow marker is representing the path line. Okay, let's see for this timeline, uh, let's say there are a bunch of particles and uh, they move and uh, there are certain, okay, uh, it would be much easier to see if I see multiple path line as well as the timeline. So I can see there is uh, multiple balls, uh, multiple particles uh, here and they goes out uh, and you see the yellow lines are representing, I am just doing it again, the yellow lines are actually the time uh, path lines and the purple one is actually the uh, timeline. So this colorful one, the purple one is a timeline. Let's say I have put it here. So you see there is a certain path and uh, all these particles at given instant of time following certain part of centered path. So that would be the purple one would be representing the timeline. The yellow one here is uh, uh, representing uh, the path line. And the uh, same you can do with the path line and the street line. So if uh, you see the yellow one is a path line, whereas the green one is a street line. So if you the motion is like this, so yellow one is actually following the certain path. So if I issue here, uh, the yellow one is following certain path. So so what you can see here in this uh, uh, flow visualization tool, uh, you can go through the, okay, I go to this streamline and uh, street line. So as a particular instant, as you see, uh, the streamlines are the red in color. So, and street lines are actually the history where the fluid particle has earlier passed through. So that is represented by this green line. So if I am here, so uh, streamline is the red one and the green one is actually the particle uh, 
that the path uh, that actually earlier uh, particle has passed through. And you can see the last thing here is an LIC image. Uh, actually, LIC image is actually the uh, uh, basically called the uh, line integral convolution. So, not need to go into that, but it is representing certain fields. So, for example, this field is uh, actually the center field. So, if uh, I just want to show some of the stream lines at the center, so I can see this uh, green one is at the center. And uh, I can see the saddle point is this one, the, this one. So the streamlines are at the saddle point and uh, the repelling forces, they are going away from that. And there are some attractive forces going inside that. So all you can see different types of streamlines. So this is a very handy tool to uh, uh, visualize fluid flow. Uh, you, uh, different field lines just like uh, uh, the street line idea is uh, uh, the history idea, so it's a green line, this one is a time line, and this one is a path line, which actual path the fluid particle is taking, and uh, the streamline is actually the uh, uh, at a steady state condition, uh, velocity vectors are always tangential, and uh, uh, if you draw those uh, tangents, uh, if you uh, join those points where you have all the tangents, you will end up with a line called streamline. So uh, this is a this is a very handy tool for uh, 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 visualizing different types of fluid flow. So at this point, uh, uh, I finish with today's uh, lecture.